Hi, this is John Mount from WinVector LLC, a data science and research training, consulting, and advising company. I want to show the use of our open source product, VTreat, with the NIME data science system. So here we have a NIME workflow. What we're doing is we're reading in some training data and some test data. We're removing a column that is present in that data but not available for modeling, in this case Y. And then we're building a supervised model of a variable called YC as a predicted function of the other columns, X, XC, and X2. Now, as we see, this data is artificial, but slightly wild. It has categorical variables, numeric variables, and some missing values in the explanatory variables. There are no missing values in the dependent variable. Now, because of the nature of this data, if we attempt to run the workflow as is, we basically run into a problem at the supervised logistic regression learner. Execution failed, the column XC, which is string type, contains missing values. So the workflow airs out here. Now obviously there are many ways to deal with this, and some of the NIME learners, such as random forest and gradient boosting, tolerate categorical variables and missing values all by themselves, but we also have this very useful generic tool for dealing with that systematically, and it's called VTreat. It's pretty popular both in the R and Python worlds, so we're going to go ahead and use it here in this workflow through the Python adapter. So all we need to do to use VTreat is through the Python extensions, intersperse the VTreat learner load node and the Python predictor node to get both a treated copy of the training data, which comes right out of the learner. In VTreat, we don't apply a predictor to training data. Instead, we take it off as a side effect of designing the data treatment, which is what this learner does. And then we also take our out of sample test data and we run it through the treatment. The treatment plan is communicated as this object here, and then the entire workflow is ready to go. So we'll run it. Reset all our nodes. And execute all our nodes. Now you see we made it through the entire workflow and we get to an ROC curve, which is a measure of model quality, one being perfect quality, 0.5 being perfectly useless, of 0.98, quite high. So this model on this tiny artificial problem is very good at predicting the column YC being true as a function of the other variables. Now what are those other variables? Well, initially, the variables were the columns X, XC, and X2. And again, YC is the dependent variable we're trying to predict from these other explanatory variables. After VTreat conversion, the variables are more numerous. There's XC is bad, XC logit code, XC prevalence, and the levels encoded in a one-hot way, except for it's not quite one-hot because we're encoding all possibilities. We're not suppressing any one column here. The Prevalence code is how rare is the level in question. This lets us do a number of great things in the downstream model, such as a good Turing-style estimate, just by having this column around. And also, this logit code is the variable re-encoded as a conditional effect, which we call impact coding, and we have a lot of writing about that at the WinVector block. And the is bad is was there a missing value, and the um, level can be copied through as also as a level. We can get explanations of all those variables from the VTreat diagnostics. This is called the score frame. Each row is a variable that VTreat considered making. And it said, from the variable x, I would create x is bad and x clean copy, two different variables. However, I don't recommend using either. And it does a statistical test, a simple linear test, to see whether that, model, that variable is predictive. Um, the interesting one, again, is the logit code, which is the variable xc re-encoded as a single variable, plus the levels. The logistic model similarly sees those variables, and we can see it in the coefficients and statistics that it used those variables that it was supplied to build the model. 
Now, how is a vTreat learner realized? Well, let's go ahead and click on this node and expand it. It's simply the input data comes into this port and it is distributed to these three Python nodes. The um, data is not actually used by either of these predictors. We're just showing the connection to be a good citizen, but basically the, all the action happens here in this Python learner. This Python learner is picking up the name of the dependent variable from the worksheet flow variables and also the outcome target, what level it considers positive, which in this case is the string true, T-R-U-E. And this is the treatment plan, which is saying the um, outcome name is the value column, the outcome target is, is given, and error on duplicate frames makes sure that we never accidentally apply a vTreat treatment to its own training data, which could introduce a nested model bias in that logistic column. And this filtered recommended is why only the columns that it considered statistically useful were passed on, though we could also turn that off. The vTreat uses a very scikit-learn style interface, which is the Python primary machine learning system. And we're doing a fit transform on the input data, which as a side effect builds the treatment plan. So it sets values within this object. And it also returns the simulated out of sample data treatment frame. So this is this very special frame that looks as if we applied the treatment plan to our training data, but it does it in a cross validated method such that it simulates having done this on data that is disjoint from the data to build the plan. And then those items are packed up into a Python object and passed out that port. The training data is transformed already. So this predictor here which returns that data out that port is really just pulling that pre-processed simulated out of sample training data from this object. And then it's just checking that the number of rows agree. So we're using the input for something. This again is not a real predictor. We're just taking that score frame object off the treatment plan and exposing it out as a table. This is all encapsulated into this wrapped up node. And then what comes out is the simulated out of sample training data, which is the training data with additional columns, the mo reusable model, which we then pass data in through a predictor. Um, it's very simple. We get the predict and plan and call transform on the input data. This allows us to run out of sample data through the logistic regression to give us an out of sample evaluation of the quality of the model which again, we're using the area under the curve as our quantitative metric, which is 0.98, one being perfect, 0.5 being quite bad. And this curve, of course, is the ROC plot, receiver operating char characteristic plot, which is basically the plotting of all the trade-offs of sensitivity versus specificity that are available to this model. A perfect curve shades in the entire system all the way to the upper left. Now that we've seen vTreat in use, Let's mention what its secret weapon is. VTreat is very, very good at re-encoding high cardinality categorical variables. That is, string-valued variables that take on a very large number of values. That is what the impact or logistic code does. And we have a lot of writing on this, and it's a really neat feature, which is actually quite hard to get right unless you do proper cross-validated methods, such as VTreat does. I hope you try this methodology in your work. And thank you very much for your time.